Hello, and welcome to Adente Rigamortis. I'm Review Cultist. I'm Mikey, the Stands for Evil. And I'm the Gamer in Yellow. And we're here to discuss those internet stories, most creepy and most pasta, and be critically silly doing it. And tonight we have the Field Lurker. So, I grabbed the Field Lurker... Um, just like a little bit behind the scenes stuff here. I grabbed the story for the field lurker and put it on the list back in the summer <laughs> when it existed still on creepboss.wiki. Um, it was posted up on the wiki by wizard spell. Um, and then like shortly, apparently shortly after I, I grabbed the link for it to put it on the queue. Uh, it was taken down from the wiki. Uh, now, through the magic of uh, archive.org or the Wayback Machine, uh, mm -hmm. we are able to read the story um, as it was before it was taken down. Um, just as a preface, it was according to the uh, the log on on the Creepos Wiki, it was taken down uh, because it did not meet the wiki's quality standards. Um, so I had that going into the story um, when I started reading it, and. Uh, this kind of is a nice little segue into like recommendations and such. Uh, I'm actually going to partially recommend the story. I will also partially recommend the story. I won't recommend it, but I've read way worse on creepypasta.wiki. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, <sure, laughs> I'm surprised um, this one got taken down for quality standards or whatever. Yeah. Like I, I looked at the log and it's like, and I checked what their standards are. It's like basically like, Spelling and grammar and stuff of like that, like was her, uh, like if like they aren't like kept up and stuff like that. So like either like those standards have gotten way better in recent years, <laughs> or they've like gotten way more strict <laughs> on their standards in in recent years about like grammar and spelling and such. Um, or I don't know, maybe maybe somebody didn't really like the story and just decided to get rid of it. I don't know. Um, but regardless, yeah, that, those are our initial recommendations. Um, and without further ado, I suppose we shall move on to the next phase of this podcast, which is the rundown to take a look at the story. So, uh, so Nair, wait, wait, checks a line at the very end of the story. Sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> Is writing what? this, yeah, Jer yeah. We find out who Jer who Nair is at the very end of the story. At the beginning, it says, "I was hanging out with my friends Tom and Jeremy." It's not Jeremy, is it? Not no. There's three of them total. Three people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. Tom and Jeremy. I thought. Th hang on, hang on. And then hang Nair, on. who doesn't get named. I thought. Thought. I thought. We had another name. Damn it! I got confused. <laughs> Wow! Hang on, let me just quickly double check that. Uh... Oh, hang on. I I think I see what you mean because at this yeah. one point, the the police seem to get the message at as they as the nodded their heads. Jeremy, I'm gonna need to see your knife. One of the officers said, "I obliged." Yeah. They yeah, I obliged. They examined it, but noticed no blood. Yeah. So, wait. <laughs> Wait, hey, did Jeremy ha did Jeremy own the knife? Jeremy and I jumped for joy. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going, I'm going for, I'm going back into the story to see if like who I had the who originally had the knife. Swiss Army knife. So Jeremy, so there's two Jeremys and a Tom in the story. I guess, yeah. Or it might be some kind of a typo, maybe. Ah. Uh... Jeremy one and Jeremy two. Okay, you know I'm just gonna. Okay, I'm keeping all this in because this is funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep calling him Nair for for because I thought it. I thought it was like I thought it was Jeremy because oh, Nair of Nair. that line. <laughs> but it's like Nair Jeremy now. Nair me, yes, yes. There okay, <laughs> I got it. Yeah, yeah, we got there. All right, so 
Naramie is writing this <laughs> to tell the story about why his undisclosed town in Illinois has a rule that you do not go out into the cornfields at night. Um, there's a creature out there that takes and kills people, raising the overall disappearance rate of the town three times over than the neighboring towns in the area. Um, Jer- and so- and Naramie <laughs> uh, didn't really believe it growing up until he was 14 when two of his friends, Tom and Jeremy, sn- uh, snuck out with him out into one of the fields on a dare after Tom dared them to do it. Um, very quickly, as they reached a tree line near a small forest, they were attacked by a tall, mysterious creature who proceeds to grab and cut Tom's stomach. Nerami rushes the creature with a pocket knife and it retreats. But as they rush Tom back to the house, the creature gives chase. They get into the house where the parents not only believe their story about what just happened, but then load them up into the car loaded to bear with a shotgun. (laughs) And after a brief little gunfight at the car and then running down the creature with the car, the parents drive the kids to the hospital. Um, Tom survives, but the police want the story. And so the kids tell it as it was or as it happened. And the police seem to believe them, though taken Naramie's knife uh, to for uh, for evidence, just to make sure like that it corroborates that they did he didn't stab uh, Tom. Um, from then on, the kids never went out into the fields again, but occasionally they would see the creature lurking around, waiting and biding its time. Finn. So yeah, that that's the story of the of the field lurker. Um, I suppose we'll we'll move on to. Everyone tolerates the Grand Inquisitions at this point. Um, so I guess this is kind of falls into like why it was like pulled off the off the the wiki is like because it didn't meet the uh, the grammar and and spelling spell check uh uh quality uh, quality assurances of of the wiki uh, because there are I found I found a number of of issues grammar wise uh, with the story so. Uh, so, in fact, most of the, my notes are actually grammar inquisition. <laughs> um, but I will I'll dive into it. Uh, basically, the gist of it was that if you went out at night, the field lurker would come and take you away. I feel like there should be a comma between night and the field lurker. So it's like. Basically, comma, the gist of it was that when you went out at night, comma, the field lurker would come and take you away. Do you guys disagree with that? Kind of. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that's really necessary. It works either way. It doesn't ruin it. Yeah. When I, when I, well, when I first read it, uh, I found myself like just kind of reading like right past it. I was like, oh, that kind of seemed weird. Like It was just kind of like... Um, uh, the gist of it was, if you went out at night, the field lurker would come and uh, take you away. Like that's just me like reading it like aloud. So I have a break there, but like when I was reading in my head it sounded weird. Like it mm-hmm. sounded like it went too fast. So it might be a nitpick. Like you could probably take it or leave it, but um the next one here. Uh, when I was 10, I figured out for myself that it was just some stupid lie parents made up to keep their kids from running away at night. So I feel like this should be worded different because to me with, with the context of like this, of what happened like right before and then like after it sounds like either he thinks the legend is a lie that the parents tell or that the stats he just gave us about like, you know, this town likes disappearance rate and stuff like that is a lie. But then the next little bit goes more into those. So I kind of reworded this bit here to kind of be like, by the time I was 10, I figured the legends and disappearances were just some stupid lie parents made up to keep their kids from running away at night. Just like, just to kind of give a little bit more clarity on like his, uh, his opinion up until this point in his life. 
on the on the situation. That works. Okay. And my next one. About forty percent of the time, the body of the missing person is found lying face down in a ditch a few weeks later, with the abdomen cut open, usually with most of their innards gone. So I feel like it should be was, not is. So like uh, about 40% of the time, the body of the missing person was found lying face down. Uh, are you saying that this is a bit of your tense talk? A little bit of a tense. Yeah, welcome to my tense talk. <laughs> so I totally, I almost forgot about the tense talk. It's been a, it's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, moving on to the next one here. Um, Jeremy, on the other hand, thought it was a bad idea. You're such a scaredy cat, said Tom. Okay, fine, Jeremy said hesitantly. While Jeremy's parents weren't looking, we ran out into the field. So all of that is through like a series of lines, like, but none of it is broken up. Like none of the dialogue is broken up. And I really wish the dialogue had been broken up or spaced down into like it's like the next space. Um, yeah, to kind of just having it in the block. Yeah. Yeah. Just to like properly format like dialogue in the story. Uh, yeah. And it, it happens a couple of times in the story, like where like dialogue is just added into the the main paragraph. When it's formatted to have the dialogue out by itself, if you're quickly skimming over the story to see how long it is, you can sometimes spoil yourself. I, I suppose, but that's not on the stories thing. That's on you because <laughs> you're like skimming ahead. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah. Also, another thing we should probably say too is. Um, this is the normal format that we do for this. We're not just, um, we don't just happen to be targeting grammar on a story that was potentially taken down for grammar reasons. We're, we're no, not trying no. to beat a dead horse here. No, we aren't. I'm just like, I, again, we gave the story the same treatment we give all stories on yes. our show. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, moving on to the next one here. Uh, we were barely able to make it back to inside the house. As soon as we did, we slammed the door as hard as we could. So another one of those things where I feel like the sentence should be changed slightly, just to like kind of be a little bit flow a little bit better, or like just maybe for better clarity. Um, we were barely able to make it back inside the house. Thankfully, we did, slamming the door as hard as we could behind us. Yep. Just like I don't know the way when I was reading it, it was like it just kind of didn't sit the 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 sentence didn't sit well the way it was written. So. Also, wouldn't it be slammed instead of slamming, Mr. Tense Talk? Okay. All right. So, Gamer now owns the uh, Ted uh, the Tense Talk. Oh God! No. <laughs> you have the title. You have the Tense Talk title. Yeah. <laughs> Bear witness. <laughs> but yeah, moving on. We ran to the living room where Jeremy's parents were watching watching TV. I think you need to remove one of those watching. It depends. Are they watching a show that's called watching TV? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but no. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what was that, Mikey? Well, they're both watching TV. So they... Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> it's still wrong. Watching happening. <laughs> Two watchings don't make a right. <laughs> but uh, I'll move on. Yes. Uh, Tom had blacked out and we didn't have much time left. I feel like had should just be removed. Like Tom blacked out and we didn't have much time left. I don't know. It just the had kind of like it was it, it felt unnecessary to me. Um, eh, the next. I could give yeah, or take yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm just I'm just in the the nitpick nook here on the couch. That's okay. It's all personal <laughs> opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, next one here. We quickly loaded his lifeless body into Jeremy's Jeremy's parents' car. Um. Wait. Tom died. <laughs> Tom died. <laughs> when did he die? Yeah. What the hell? Well, I, I think I think it's like lifeless. Like. As to mean like motionless or like he's not moving or like he's, 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 he's yeah he's knocked out. So I actually I suggest uh, replacing lifeless with motionless. Um, 
so as yeah. not to imply a fatality. Yeah. <laughs> because Tom made it at the end of the story, so he's not like it wasn't. He dead. died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom died. Just like in like that Dark Souls style <laughs> like thing. Uh, and then my next one here. The holes began to fill up. So Jeremy's dad slammed on the pedal and ran the thing over while he had the chance. So I kind of want an addition to be added to the very beginning of this. So it's like two hour horror, the holes began to fill up. So Jeremy's dad slammed the pedal on the pedal and ran the thing over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess that. without that, it kind of seems like that's normal. It's like, oh yeah, that that's the thing it does. We know that. That being yeah, said, exactly. the parents might know it does that. So they may yeah. not be horrified, but the kids would be. But the kids would be there. Go, I would like that at ad- that addition. <laughs> Fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on to the next one here. Uh, Tom got out of bed to explain. We saw stitches all over his abdomen, and a nurse quickly came. Or sorry, <clears throat> a nurse quickly came over and sat him back down. I feel like in Tom's condition, in the context of the story, best he could probably do is sit up in bed. Like maybe like holding himself up by his elbows or something like not like because the way it's written, it sounds like he just like he like hopped out of bed and like started giving the spiel <laughs> when like that ass, man. I mean, I guess, but is this like the same night of the stabbing? Yeah, it's literally that <laughs> night. <laughs> like it's a couple of hours later, but it's yeah. like he was like he passed out. He had uh, like they say like he s- suffered a lot. He lost a lot of blood uh, and was in critical condition, but was going to make it. And then, like, he just he just gets out of bed <laughs> to explain to the officers, like, a, a couple of hours later. Mm-hmm. It's like, damn, that was a... He's got a hell of a healing factor. Apparently, he's Logan. <laughs> a little bit. <clears throat> Are you still running on the adrenaline from chasing all that? I don't think adrenaline lasts that long. No, it don't. I'm trying, though. <laughs> you're, you're trying so hard, yeah. and, and you're getting so far, but, but obviously, honestly, in the end, it, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, moving on to my last one here Um, the police seem to get the message as the nodded their heads I think it needs to be as they nodded their heads Mm -hmm. and that is the end of my grammar acquisition so Mikey the E stands for evil Uh, well you did a fairly good job there Yeah, and I have a conjunction junction ooh uh, insert conjunction junction bit here. Boop. It won't happen again. But I saw what I saw. It was a cool summer evening that day, and I was hanging out with my friends, Tom and Jeremy. But it was too late. It sounded like an eight wheeler coming to a complete halt. It dropped Tom and ran back into the forest. It was trying to get us to let our guard down. It was screaming that horrible scream again. But that's when I realized that our parents knew. It banged harder and cracked the window open. It tried to grab the neck of Jeremy's dad. It had been a long night. But as far as Jeremy tells me, the damn thing was gone when we got back. Finn. Wow. So an eight wheeler <laughs> attacks them. Decepticon. <laughs> just... Well, I'm thinking either Decepticon or this is the advent of the Cars universe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it said it grabbed the... him by the neck. That's why yeah. I say Decepticon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, fair. Uh, yeah, or it's just Killdozer. It's like, just psychically attacking people. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I couldn't get the idea that it was an eight-wheeler out of my head, even, no, like, even too. with the screaming and stuff of that, so it's like, damn it. <laughs> the screaming was just, like, the sound of its engine or its horn or something. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I like the uh, yeah. Uh, if if Michael if Michael Bay decided to make a Transformers m- movie, but a horror movie, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it would be. <laughs> there's brief snippets of that exact thing in pretty much all the Transformers movies, anyways. Yeah, that's true. Like 
Shia LaBeouf like being chased by uh, by his um, own car. <laughs> no, I mean the, the the cop car one, lockdown or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember what that car, what that Decepticon it's was. It's really named. not important. No, it isn't. <sighs> Are you googling it? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, and for those unaware. Uh, Mikey does these strings of sentences to highlight all the sentences in a story that start with words that they probably shouldn't, like it sends or butts, because there's always better words. Yep. And occasionally we get some really fun uh, out of context uh, situations out of uh, reading after reading off these uh, these lines. Mm-hmm. Like we now know that the field lurker is actually Decepticon. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get a full de- description. Just that's eight feet tall. Yeah, I I have a little bit of a of a, a comment on that in my actual thoughts, but mm-hmm. I'll, I'll hold off on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, gamer, you're up. Oh yeah, it's my turn. But forty percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> yeah, man. I I fought myself to not say that when I did that quote. Yeah. That, sorry, that wasn't even this. I was just that's the start of the line, so I had to say it. Um, but forty percent of the time. The body of the missing person is found lying face down in a ditch a few weeks later. The abdomen cut open, usually with the most of their innards gone. Another 10% of the time, the person was found wandering around confused with a scar on their stomachs. The rest of the time, it's just your run-of-the-mill kidnapping or runaways. So, I don't know if this is technically an uh, actual note or not, but considering like things need to be changed, I put it, or at least in my opinion, should be changed. I put it under grammar. Mm-hmm. Regardless. So, Based on those numbers, it's saying that 50% of the kidnappings in this area are from this creature, which means that the town has double the amount of kidnappings, not three times the amount of kidnappings like it says. Oh, yeah, you're right. It should be like like 40. Should should it then be like 40% and then like 30% of the is when people are missing and then the rest is they just disappear or they, they just like they're just runaways? Basically, like a third Sorry. of all of the disappearances are because of this, and out yeah. of that third, ten percent of them actually come back with the scar on their stomach. Yeah. Ergo, it's really only fifty percent. <laughs> yeah. So either yeah. yeah, the math is wrong here, or it's exaggerated when they said when um, Naremi had to think for a second. Naremi said the that it's triple the amount when it's really double, like the exaggeration. Yeah. Or there's yeah. another creature causing kidnappings too, but it's not just not being talked about. I mean, that's fair. Mm-hmm. There could be like a family of, of, of field lurkers out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just mean an entirely different entity. Oh, yeah. The um, uh, uh, forest dweller. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> also, I'd like to point out actually the this might have actually like the creature that is in this story might have just been the forest dweller because if you notice it wasn't inside the the cornfield per se, it came out of the woods <laughs> near the cornfield. <laughs> they were in the cornfield, right? When it first attacked. They were in the cornfield near the and it, but it wasn't until they got to the uh the the tree line of like a small forest that it came out of the woods and attacked Tom. We're standing right by a small forest-like area of trees, which marked the end of the cornfield, coming from the yeah. forest. Yeah. Okay. So it came out of the forest. <laughs> like, just, uh, it's semantics. It is semantics. The cornfield <laughs> yeah. is what drew it out, though. Yeah, that's true. You don't go in the cornfield because it comes after you if you do that. This would be it's okay. not locked to the cornfield. It can come from anywhere. It's just if you yeah. go into the cornfield at night, you've aggroed it. Yeah. And you were going to say something. Sorry. I, I was, but I'm going to save it for like actual thoughts because we're still in your your in your grammar position. So okay. Then I will move on. He let out a horrible shriek. It sounded like an eight wheeler coming to a complete halt. I'm wondering if they mean an 18-wheeler. Because I know vehicles can have eight wheels, but I think the sound you're getting, you're trying for, is like a tractor trailer slamming the brakes on, not like an APC or something like that with four wheels. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm looking at like what eight-wheelers are. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking at what eight-wheelers are, and it's just ridiculous. Like, I mean, log- like the, the, it looks, the, some of them look like those uh, like 
amphibians. Yes. But then there's ones that are just outlandish. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's like off-road vehicles. They're primarily off-road vehicles. That purple one with three in the back, that's not probably not real. <laughs> yeah. If you Google eight-wheeler, you'll see it. It's probably Photoshop. <laughs> Good lord. Wait, there's a second one. Oh, God. Oh, no, it's more there it's an actual thing, I think. It can't be. Maybe eight-wheel truck, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. I mean, there are a lot of eight-wheel trucks I'm seeing when I look up that. Oh, I know, but I just don't know if that's the sound that they're trying to get because, like, you don't really think of an eight-wheeler very often. It's normally an 18-wheeler, a.k.a. a uh, tractor-trailer. Yeah. A really loud... Yeah, a semi. Yeah. 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 Hmm. I gotcha. Then, um... The creature ran up to the car and started banging on the window. Jeremy's dad turned the safety off. Toom, it groaned. Give me toom. <laughs> Banged harder and cracked the window open. That's how I read it when I first read it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, it's Yeah, for, for for context, it's supposed to be Tom. Yeah. However, I, I understand. Because it looks like, like Toom. <laughs> Which could just be the sound that that creature makes, and I'd be fine with that. But then it's like, it, it groaned again, give me tomb. Yeah. Tomb eternal. <laughs> nice. I can't keep making title cards every time we do an episode. <laughs> you can't, but you will. Yeah, maybe. Because that one will actually end kind of nicely. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> man, when I first read this, I read it as tomb, but because... The previous words were just um, that Jeremy's dad turned the safety off, and then all of a sudden, boom! I thought that was like a gunshot sound, like Toom. yeah, <laughs> but it was not. And then I realized it was the creature talking when it said it groaned, "Give me Toom." <laughs> yeah, but then it clicked. I'm like, okay, it's Tom. So a way to fix that, I believe, in my opinion, the way that I, w- I would personally like it is to go T O and then repeated M. Because it's clearly okay. Tom. Yeah. And whether it's saying Tom or Tom, <laughs> like it's. Sorry, I just said like, Tom, may ha, <laughs> may ha, Tom. <laughs> nice. Sorry. You should be. Actually, you shouldn't be. I, I like Dragon Ball. Anyways, but yeah, I don't know. My opinion repeated him or. Sorry to say it. Pick a different name if you're gonna do this because <laughs> putting extra Fair. O's in there uh, makes tomb and such. Mm-hmm. Or if it was any other name, if you just repeated or if it had been like letters, it wouldn't make it sound weird. Yeah. And then uh, at the end, where it says it banged harder and cracked the window open, I'd prefer smash mm-hmm. the window open because cracking it makes it sound like it's well cracked but not broken yet. Yeah. The crack and a smash are different. I don't know why. I said yeah, Smash is a like is a game. <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> Nevada. Dad. Anyways. Um, Nebraska. The, Illinois. I've never sorry. said it like. That. No, I don't. No, I'm just I'm just doing that voice. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I'm good to go now. That's end of my grammar in yellow. Okay. Uh, and I, again, like I kind of like to parrot what Gamer said earlier. It's like we are we we gave the story like the the al dente <laughs> the al dente treatment mm-hmm. of just like grammar of inquisiting its grammar, uh, like every other story that we've done on the show. And again, like all of these, like uh, even though like there there were a lot of a fair amount of like grammar inquisition, they're easily fixed. Yeah. Um. Like I feel like the person who wrote the story, like and this story was only posted like within this year onto creepost.wiki and then was removed a couple months later. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like they should have at least given the the person a like a slap on the wrist at the very least, or like, just like, Hey, like maybe you should like run your story through a, like a, a grammar or spelling thing. And then maybe to go into that. Cause, and, and maybe they did, but like the log only shows that like the story was created in March and then it was removed in July. Yeah. So of this year. So mm-hmm. like, yeah. Um, but 
I digress, uh, and we are done the grammar acquisition. We shall move on to actual thoughts. So I'm going to start with the image that is on the story. Um, and But I'm also going to start with this quote. I will not be providing the name or any more details about where it is. There's nothing worthwhile here. And if you are stupid enough to think of coming here at night, you'll probably get yourself killed. Yet you gave us an image of a field in your town, which means that a certain specific type of person online could probably locate it. <laughs> like there are, there is actually like online, there's like a challenge, like a, a, some, a, a game or a challenge where like people get a photo of a place somewhere in the world. And some people are like deadly accurate at like, as the like, look at this image and pinpoint roughly where it is and to see how close they are. And some people get really goddamn close to that location. There's an entire game mm. online that's, called GeoGuessr. But I just, I, I, I just, yeah, GeoGuessr, yeah. yeah. But that's what exactly I what I was saying. I didn't know that you meant like an actual <laughs> quote unquote video game. I thought you meant just like a person is. I didn't think it was actually something that is set up like a video game, just like on message boards, they set a picture and then people respond. Well, actually there is stuff like that too. Like there are people that like, Hey, I have this image. I don't know where it is. Can you try it? Can, can you help me out? And then they like crowd source yeah. like online to like get people to look at. It. So like you've, and, and like the image itself, uh, like it's small because it's, and, and we can't expand it because it's on the, um, uh, the way back machine archive.org. Um, but it's like, again, a, a farm field or like an open field and you can see some suburbs off in the distance. And then there's like a road. Somebody I feel could easily like, like look at that and figure and, and like not easily, but like through some like crowdsourcing online or, or, or some gun, some gumption could probably locate where that town is based on that image. Um, I'm just saying like in regards to like in story, like in, in, in fiction and like immersion level wise, if you're going to say like, don't, uh, I'm not going to give any more names about this place. Don't try to find it. Otherwise you might get yourself killed. Maybe don't put an image. Like, I mean, the image is cool, but this is one of those cases where like, I don't want the image because context of the story or, or like the warning that you've put in your story. Well, the image also doesn't really add to it. Yeah, exactly. That, that also like, it, it doesn't quite add, like it, it's, mediocre i suppose <laughs> like, it's kind of like, better if it's it, just like a stock image of just a like a cornfield but not showing roads and stuff around it just like zoomed in a little bit more of just corn <laughs> yeah exactly like just like maybe like a picture of somebody in a cornfield like but like so like from like a chest a chest high view or something mm -hmm. yeah um yeah, because like as it is, like I don't really think the image is uh, the, the the photo is necessary at all. Is what I'm trying to get at here. Um, but I will move on to the next thing here. Uh, actually, I'm repeating a quote that you just did, gamer. Uh, it was a cool summer evening that day, and I was hanging out with my friends, Tom and Jerry. Jeremy, <laughs> I said the exact same thing. <laughs> I, I swear to God, when I first read the story, I immediately read it as Tom and Jerry. <laughs> For the entirety of my read, they were Tom and Jerry. <laughs> nice. When Tom so got this picked guy... up and stabbed, it was that <laughs> um, that iconic Tom scream from all the cartoons, that <laughs> yes. really loud one. That's the noise he made. Also, it makes sense because Tom always is the one that gets hurt. Yeah. Jerry rarely, rarely gets hurt in the, in the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> So what you're saying is this story could easily be like tweaked to be a lost episode of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> it already was in my head. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. But yeah, if if Tom is Tom and Jerry's Jerry, then before we came to the conclusion about Naramy and he didn't have a name, I was like, is Nair Butch then? Butch is the <gasps> black cat that's like friends with Tom. Oh, I thought you were talking. You were reference the dog. No, uh, the field lurker would be Spike the bulldog because he he's always beating yes. the shit out of them. Ah, <laughs> oh, god, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So I just imagine this buff bulldog just picking Tom up and just spearing him in the chest <laughs> with his hand. These are also hang on. Just as a quick aside, is there also a bulldog bully that is in Sylvester and Tweety? 
or am I getting am I getting them confused? Like, cause I like, cause I was like, go to reference. Oh yeah, is it like a bulldog? And it's like, wait, is that just Tom? Is that just Sylvester and Tweety from like Looney Tunes? But like, wait, is there a bulldog in to- in Tom and Jerry too? It's not a bulldog. <laughs> He's um, I remember him being brown. I'm trying to find a picture of him. I think it is. There's so many freaking characters. Yeah, it is a bulldog in Tom and Jerry. Hector the bulldog. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then it's brown though. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, and then Sylvester and Tweety is an off white. No, some of these is gray. In that one, he's, he's yellow. So yeah, that's the best thing. I saw. I, I saw nothing but gray from. And then yeah, it's basically the same fucking dog in in uh, in in uh, Sylvester and Tweety uh, versus Tom and Jerry. Yeah, are they the same franchise? Wow. Too? No, they aren't. Tom and Jerry is, I believe, is Hanna Barbera. Wow. I think. Hang on, let me double check that. Actually, <laughs> this is super important. Really this is. is important. <laughs> this is the important thing. Yeah, that's um, a straight rip. I mean, that happened all the time, honestly. Yeah. In yeah, no, it's Hanna Barbera. Was is Tom and Jerry? Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that. Wow. It's apparently, an orange um, cat on to- in Tom and Jerry. His name is uh, Switching Kitten. Sorry. Yeah. So originally ran it was originally run by Hanna Barbera and then it was taken over by MGM. So yeah. Wow. We're learning things about old media. We are. I mean, again, that happened all the time in comic books for sure, like in terms of like the same kind of look or like a similar kind of character, Mm -hmm. like between DC and Marvel. So Yeah, I suppose. Yep. But uh yeah, moving on. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't unsee that now. Like Tom and Jerry are the are the are the friends, and then like uh, Butch the cat the is the is is is, is Naremi, mm-hmm. and then the yeah the field lurker is uh is the dog. Yep, Hector. No Spike. And then Hector's the, par- the other one. Yeah, Spike. Yeah, yes, Spike. God damn it. And then uh, the parents are actually their pet parents. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're, they're they're humans. Wow. <laughs> Oh God! Does that mean that like the like they 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 now just a picture of, like Spike getting shot in the face with a shotgun with a shotgun and then it's just like reforming like a tur- like the T one thousand like ja, 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 ja. <laughs> he saw the shotgun blast coming and like his his weird like um like chin flaps went up and covered his face and then they just kind of like mushed out of the way. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, oh, yeah. It they, all the like it it defl- it took all the bullets and then just like they just pop yeah. off pop off it cartoonishly. <laughs> oh my god! It explains why you didn't die by the shotgun blast of the face because it's a cartoon. <laughs> yep, exactly. So when they rushed them to the hospital, it was actually just like a vet. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Uh, do you have anything more to add to the awesomeness of this lost episode? No, <laughs> Okay, I suppose we'll move on then. Um, so speaking of the 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 uh, the field lurker and his description and what he might be, um, you're gonna hear this quote here: "A silhouette-like figure slowly emerged from the trees, which I would say was at least eight feet tall." The creature grabbed Tom by the arm and turned him around. I kind of w- so again, like our our silliness aside, I kind of wish the story went into a few more descriptions of the creature after this, mm-hmm. like maybe mm-hmm. emphasizing its pure black featureless shadow form when it attacks the car later. Like if it if it's this if it's this detailless shade attacking people, that's fine. Like I'm cool with like a shadow monster attacking people, and you don't have. A whole lot of description for it other than like its shape or form but you do need to give some kind of description of its shape um or at least of its simple shape uh or even like the the air it gives off when it's attacking people just for like a few little additional bits of of uh of storytelling and information because um, it, otherwise it's, ex- exactly yeah like it just kind of comes off kind of boring otherwise like it's just when you're just constantly referring to it as the creature after giving us a the description of a silhouette like figure slowly emerging from the trees that's eight feet tall <laughs> yeah and it could have just been a silhouette um, because it's nighttime exactly yeah. yeah um now my idea like the my an actual serious idea that came up when we were talking in, in gamers grammar and yellow uh was uh what if the field lurker is the revenant 
or like shade shadow spirit of the original landowner or farmer of the land that the town was built on. Like before the town existed, there was this massive farm that was like a like farm property, like multiple fields and like across like a whole stretch of land. And when the farmer and or like landowner was killed or died, um, the, the township just kind of like divvied up. Like he didn't have any like uh, heirs or any kind of family. So the township just kind of divvied up and parceled out the land to different properties. Then that's how the town was formed. But the original owner is just like, now just kind of super pissed and angry and like get off my like literally it's it's grand torino of the horror movie yeah. like a revenant just like get off my lawn <laughs> get off my farm yeah, um I can see that for sure yeah that yeah and like you could give that a little bit more information like uh, kind of like parse that out into like as part of the urban legend like some say the field lurker was the what i just said about the farm the the farm the old farmer who owned most of the land in this area and then it got divvied up it it also kind of add into like kind of a, a little bit of a social commentary of horror of like um like the land like having like kind of like the like having kind of like a grudge or like like a land being taken away from somebody after they were killed or murdered or some of that or like the land maybe was the land was cheated from somebody and like divvied up to make the town or something like that so it's almost like the 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 field lurker is n- is kind of a victim as well as being the monster. Yeah. Like there's a reason why he's doing this, not just senseless like malevolence. <laughs> yeah, this is always good when there's a reason behind it. Yeah, it adds more depth. Mm-hmm. Um, what about your classic move the- of you don't want to know too much about the monster? <laughs> I mean giving it part of the urban legend that's 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 that part's fine like when you add it into the urban legend because that's just a story it could it could be true it could not yeah be. that's true yeah um but yeah again just a little bit more i think i would think would have helped it like a little bit more descriptor or a little bit more back like something a little bit more added on to give this creature a little bit more depth than what it is um and then my last one here is kind of where i poke holes at the plot a little bit um so this is the quote some people just think we're crazy some think we're telling the truth the one thing i advise to all of you is this never ever go into the fields at night you'll regret it like every field or or just the fields around this town of yours in illinois that we don't have a name to so we will never go there (laughs) <laughs> like a little, a little oh, that wording was a little broad <laughs> uh yeah but also i know that there is going to be there are going to be stubborn people and those people who st- who have to stay somewhere simply because they feel oppressed or like they feel like they have no other choice so they're just kind of helpless in that in a situation but i'm surprised this town didn't just become a ghost town like long ago like between people who do the right thing in like this kind of scenario and just move out and like move away regardless of the circumstances or, and then adding on to the amount of people, the, or the amount of disappearances that go on in the story in, in this, in this town, how is this town still to 2,500 people strong? Yeah. <laughs> like, and, I, and like when I say ghost town, like there'd still be people living in a ghost. There, there are still people living in ghost towns um like sometimes like there are there were still people living in centralia when it was declared a ghost town and abandoned um because they it's their property damn it and they'll 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 live with the 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 consequences of having to live on toxic Mm -hmm. land (laughs) like there are people like that and like there's also like it's the same situation of like why doesn't the person move out of that haunted house they just bought it's like well they sunk all their money into that house and so they're kind of stuck there otherwise they're homeless Um, like that kind of stuff, but like again, like we're we're given a a population stat roughly by the narrator here by Naremi of like twenty five hundred people. That seems like a lot of people for a town that is constantly losing people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just surprised that it isn't a ghost town mm. already. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, that's my my gra- that's my actual thoughts. So. Mikey, the East Dance Revival. It is your turn again. All right. Uh, so my first actual thought is based off of the name of the story. 
mm-hmm. the, the field lurker. Uh, so the word lurker um, reminded me of an old strong bad email. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a uh, garage sale. And the reason for that is because uh, there's a guy called The Lurker who goes to a garage sale, stands around, and doesn't buy anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, that's 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 an archetype yeah. of person that, that goes shopping, or goes like perusing and lurking around uh, uh, like garage sales or even like just like going from store to store like they're just the lurker but yeah i was gonna say i'm surprised <laughs> yeah. i don't remember that one but there's so many strong bad emails i'm not surprised <laughs> yeah yeah uh so going into this i was expecting a guy standing in a field looking ominous and doing nothing yeah <laughs> but but luckily, it wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, because otherwise, Mike, Mikey would be pissed. Because it's like, do something! <laughs> and said, so technically, Honestly, we got story, a guy this... that was in the forest that did something. <laughs> that was dwelling in the forest and then came out when somebody was out in the mm-hmm. field. Um, also, actually, if anything, this story is like kind of gets points for like, just cutting all the bullshit. It's like, yeah, as soon as we got out to the field, we got attacked. Yeah. <laughs> like there was no, like there was no prep work or there was no like build up. It was just like, yeah, by the time we got to the end, when we got to the end of the, uh, to the, the tree line on the other side of the, 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 the cornfield, we got attacked by the monster. <laughs> so. But yeah. You to do. So. My next note here, I have a quote. Okay. Um, If you've ever been to Illinois, and not just Chicago for that matter, you would know that we have a lot of corn here. You could even say that it's a corny state. So I've been to Illinois maybe once, uh, many years ago. And... To be honest, I was more interested in finding uh, Kentucky bluegrass. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, because being young and naive, uh, I was expecting to see actual blue grass. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the only one sitting there being like, what does he mean? <laughs> am I too dumb for this? Yeah. Yes, I am. No. We're too dumb for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so I was disappointed when I found out that Kentucky bluegrass was not in fact blue at all. It's just regular colored grass. Fair. Okay. All right. Uh, do, do, do. My my next actual thought is that a uh, potentially better name for the uh, story could be the organ player. Because uh, he just wants to play your organs. Oh, and... I... I hate you, but that is so fucking good. I love the double entendre. It's just like... Or the, the play on words. Like, you think it's like when you when you hear organ player... You go into the story thinking it's going to be about a about a an organ player like the musician type Pianist. thing, <laughs> but it's actually literally an organ player. <laughs> That's cool. That ah, oh, fucking love that. That somebody somebody use that in a story, please, <laughs> and send us a link to that story that you wrote. I want to read that. <laughs> Next actual thought here is that uh, I like that the monster actually does things and that the parents know about it yeah it's always refreshing when like in a story or in a movie when like the characters aren't having to like fight people's like denial of a situation or like reject reject the uh the truth of the situation yeah, that is the default to yeah. everything like supernatural going on is no one believes them yeah yeah 
I, I like how the story basically points out that, yeah, the um, it's just the parents telling a lie to get you not to go into the fields, but it's actually the truth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I like how the monster goes after Tom. As I quote here, Tom was a jerk. Yeah, that's true. The bully does get picked. The, the bully is the one that gets uh, gets his comeuppance a little bit. Mm-hmm. Or the bully, the bully adjacent character. I don't know if he's just straight up a bully. He's just a jerk, as it's as he's quoted yeah. saying. Yeah, as Naramie would call him. He's that friend. Everyone yeah. listening, you know who we're talking about. Every person, every circle of friends has mm-hmm. that guy or that gal. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Don't call him out. <laughs> I'll beep it. I'll, I'll, I'll beep it. You at least went. I'll, <laughs> I'll bleep it. I'll bleep it. It's fine. Okay. And then another, uh, the, the last thought that I have here. I feel the ending could have been better. Um, And by that, I mean this quote here. Every now and then, I see it out of the corner of my eye, waiting. Like, to me, that doesn't really fit the story. So I rewrote it to, every now and then, when I look into the field at night, I swear I can see a silhouette. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, because... That definitely if it's just always it. in the corner of his eye somewhere, why isn't it attacking him? Like what mm-hmm. caused what caused it to break aggro? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think yours definitely like adds a little bit extra like continuity to the story. <laughs> and that's into my actual thought. Okay. Then we move on to gamer. Okay. Our first note is actually sort of a grammar thing. <laughs> so, I had a grammar thing that was actually a okay. note and a, a note that's actually grammar, but that's fine. It's it's fine. Um, but it's not a bad thing about the grammar. It's actually a good thing about the grammar. Um, I like the use of bold to show emphasis in this. It's very clear. It's yeah. not italics. Because I love <laughs> italics. We all know how much you hate the Italians. I mean, the italics. Wow. <laughs> Unrelated, but anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, I really like that. I think it works really well. It's clear. I'm assuming you did not like it, Cultus, because you probably copied it over to a word processor and you didn't see the formatting in bold. How dare <laughs> you? Um, I actually did put it onto Google Doc, but I read it on the on the archive. So because I saw that there were like bolds and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I was hoping I would catch yeah. you with that, and you'd be like, "Wait, oh shit, there's bulls." <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nope. <laughs> yeah, that, that... I'm not you with the italics. Well, that's no. the thing. Italics are easy to miss. <laughs> I, I know. You I cannot know. Yeah, miss I know. bold. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, they're staring at me right now. Like, as I have the uh, the page just pulled like up, shitless. It's right there. <laughs> or, or just wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and bang, bang. Oh, I just realized there is an italic. Don't, Are you serial? Don't. Yep. Don't. don't. <laughs> Where is don't. it? Uh, I couldn't just sit around and watch that thing kill Tom. And thing is an italic. <sighs> <laughs> I I'm I'm st- I'm like. I am legitimately like like staring deeply into the into the paragraphs, <laughs> trying to find it. I'm not it's even seeing where it stands out. What the fuck? Yeah, it, that's it's the italics paragraph italics after it. wrong, and it's the last sentence. Oh my god! You're yeah. I g- g- <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it it just blends in so like so naturally. Like what the yeah, fuck compared to wrong up there. Yeah, wrong. If it had been that thing in bold, like that. If anything, there's the gra- there's my, there's another grammar position. That thing should not be italics. It should be bold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that thing. 
kill Tom. Yeah, that stupid thing called italics needs to die <laughs> and be bolded. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Case in point right there. Yeah. Italics really just need mm-hmm. to burn. They really do. But I'll move on. Yep. Uh, you're such a scaredy cat, said Tom. Okay, fine, Jeremy said hesitantly. No, Tom is the cat. Jerry is the mouse. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, the creature grabbed Tom by the arm and turned him around. He lifted his hand slowly and thrusted it into Tom's torso, causing Tom to let out a horrible shriek of pain. A little bit later in the paragraph, it says, uh, Jeremy took off his shirt and wrapped it around Tom's wound. Miraculously, the thing didn't rupture any of his internals. So, I know it says miraculously and all that. I don't know how that yeah. could have happened. A torso is stuffed full of a lot of the things, lots of internals. That you need yeah. to live? And like, yes, a bullet could potentially miss everything, but that's because a bullet is tiny compared to the entire hand of an eight-foot-tall creature. <laughs> yeah, especially since it was thrust into his torso. Like I was just like... It's like a fatality sort of situation where like or like a Kali Ma like from like India Jones where like they just like dig the hand into the stomach area or the torso area and just like there's going to be some definitely going to be some collateral damage in in uh, in the on the inside of that person's yeah. body. <laughs> You're going to have a bad time. Yeah. It's like Whoa. <laughs> but even with all that aside I don't think these kids are skilled enough doctors to be able to assess on the spot that the wound didn't hit anything important. Like yeah. Mentioning the fact that yeah. the stab missed all of his internals is not important, and it also immediately tells us that Tom's okay and he's going to be okay, breaking the entire concern of the scene that just uh, happened. Yeah, you're kind of right on that. It moves all mm-hmm. the tension, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And then moving on. I reached for my Swiss army knife and flipped open the long blade and lunged forward, jabbing it into the creature's leg. The thing let out a horrible shriek. It sounded like an 18-wheeler coming to a complete halt. It dropped Tom and ran back into the forest. So, out of everyone here, I kind of feel like the field lurker is the biggest scaredy cat. Like, way more than Jeremy is, because this kid stabbed him in the leg with a blade that's like, what, two inches long? And he's, the creature screams and bails. Yeah, I, I did like it's like I uh like he calls it a Swiss Army knife and then like I think he calls it a large blade. There's on every and I remember Swiss Army stopping. knife there is a a long a sh- there's a short blade and a longer blade. It is not a sword. Oh, okay, so maybe that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but like when he when he said like my large blade, I was like I scoffed like I like when I read it because it was like it's it's a Swiss Army knife blade. It's not that big. <laughs> Comparatively, there's but, a short and a long one. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is true, uh, and I, I do agree. It is, yeah, flipped open the the long blade. Okay, never mind. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it, it does say the long blade of of the Swiss Army knife. Okay, um, but yeah, also like, yes, but I feel like I feel like honestly, the the field worker seems like an ambush predator at best. Like it gets in, does scare tactics because like of its of its appearance and size. But as soon as you like uh, uh, retaliate, that's when it withdraws and waits for another opportunity. So it doesn't because its power level. Like I'm going to continue with the rest of my thought here. Its power okay. level of yes. resistance seems to fluctuate through the story between its um, appearances. Because at first he mm-hmm. screams and bails from a knife in the leg. Later on, he takes both barrels of a shotgun's buckshot to the face. He doesn't flinch, and it heals almost instantly. See that what we're hearing, what we're what, what what I'm hearing here is, the head is not the weak point that you would expect from this creature. It's actually the weak point. The secret weak point is the leg. It is literally the Achilles heel <laughs> of the creature. I mean, that might be the case. Is his heel? Yeah, but like he's impervious. Other what? His healing factor is impervious around everywhere else, except, except, except for his heel. His, his heel. <laughs> Yeah, except for his heel. It literally is an Achilles heel. He's Achilles. We we found him. We found the spirit of Achilles. Yeah. He's back. He's living in Illinois. He's a healing factor, and the only way you can get past it is by hitting him in the heel. Well, that 
gamer that was actually like the myth of, of achilles was he could not be killed or he could not be harmed except for his heel which was incredibly yes. sensitive and delicate <laughs> but yeah the other factor we have here is the parents know about this creature yeah and if they know about the creature they should know how to defend themselves from it and if they know that it runs away from stab wounds, <laughs> they should have brought a kitchen knife instead of a shotgun. <laughs> or aimed for the leg, not the head. <laughs> Which in that situation, they wouldn't have been able to because he was standing in front of their car. That's but, true, yeah. In which case, just run it down. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed weird that they're the ones that are prepared and they did the least amount of damage. Yeah. Yeah, they were second fiddle to a child with a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> that is fair. I mean, that is also I. I no, I'm not actually fighting on this, but that is very like '80s horror movie, like like kid horror movie, where like the the parents like with their guns and stuff like that are helpless against the monsters. And it's up for the, but it's up to the the gumption and the ingenuity of the children to find the the actual like secret a way of defeating mm-hmm. the monster. <laughs> like this, this kind of felt like a little bit like an '80s movie. Like, uh, for example, in Monster Squad, they blow up Wolfman with a grenade. Like the 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 dad, does. like the the dad who's also the, like the sheriff of, or like or like the deputy of town, like throws a grenade at the at the at the at Wolfman and it blows up, and all the parts reassemble, and the kids are like, "You didn't use silver," <laughs> and that's and w- one shot with silver kills the killed the mm-hmm. Wolfman. So it's like, yeah, it's it's very much that kind of like 80s plot. But I'm not fighting you on this. Like, I do agree. It is kind of ridiculous <laughs> in the story. Because, yeah, just it, it felt so weird. It almost felt like there were two completely yeah. different creatures that attacked. <laughs> maybe it was. <laughs> maybe maybe the, the thing that attacked them in the wood, like near the woods was actually the forest dweller. And the creature that attacked them at the car was actually the field lurker. Okay, the forest dweller only comes after them when they're near the forest at night. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then the thing that was chasing them on the way back, because they ran they were running through the cornfield, they were probably making a lot of noise. They alerted the field yeah. lurker. So they were actually being attacked by two monsters, but they think it's it's one monster because um because of the like heat of the moment and like not not seeing all the details and stuff. Surprisingly plausible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. A last note, just after the story is all over and everything. Why did the field lurker always stab people in the gut? It's a very specific thing that it does, and we get no information about it at all. And because of how yeah. specific its method of attack is, I feel like it was thought up for a reason. Especially since the parents know about it, so we could have like got one of them to tell us stuff about it. That or I wish we had gotten more of an urban legend, like not just like they say uh, they say not to go into the cornfields at night because otherwise the field lurker will, will will get you and then play around with your insides because he likes to do that. But it's like why? Like there's got to be more to that urban legend as to why he yeah, does that. Like I said, it's something so very specific, but there's got to be <clears> a reason. Yeah, like going back to my. That he was the he's the revenant or shade of like the old the, the the former land baron or landowner of the property. Maybe he was like sliced like maybe he was like uh, tied to a tree and like his his entrails were like cut. He was like cut open to uh, let his entrails uh, be uh, feasted on by like buzzards by like some like some local gang or like the the like the the town who, or the the people that wanted to start a town but like needed the land or something like mm-hmm. that. So like maybe that's why he plays with people's insides is that his insides were like it was a part of how he died. Or kind he of thing. rips them out and puts them in himself. Yeah, because exactly. Like his. kind of like the skin taker or something like that. Yeah. Because he lost his. Yeah, exactly. And then you gotta get to the the urban legend of the uh, the person who like stole a, a like <sighs> this is actually a, a story that I was told of like a guy who went out to uh with some money to go to a butcher and and grab some liver for dinner for his family spent it on on uh on something that he shouldn't have like something frivolous 
couldn't pay for the but the meat couldn't pay for the liver from from the uh, butcher, but there was a cemetery that had a fresh grave, so he went in there and took a person's liver, like a corpse's liver, and brought it home. And then that night, the cre- uh, the 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 corpse came looking back for his <laughs> liver, uh, and and pulled it out of the uh, the person later that night. Damn, it's like that kind of mm-hmm. situation. Yeah, very much so. But yeah, and um, back to what I was saying, like how the um, the adults could say some stuff because the kids don't know, but the adults do. But the fact that the adults know stuff isn't used. Yeah, and even if utilized. you didn't want them to tell, you could have the creature show why it does it in one way or mm-hmm. another. Yep, like maybe Tom doesn't survive. Yep, <laughs> I mean him dying or, or not dying. That's not really what I'm talking about. It's like, why specifically go for the gut? And why do they come back oh, no, but I mean, stitched like, up, but like weird? So like, sometimes yeah. it puts them back together. Yeah, like maybe he he is like 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 um, Mikey brought up. Like maybe he's actually the uh, the organ player. Like sometimes he sometimes he keeps his toys. Sometimes he mm-hmm. puts them back. <laughs> but what I was saying about Tom is like like Tom dying or, or like not making it is like like that's how we show like what yes. he does like we tom just doesn't make it because he gets he gets his organs played with mm. <laughs> these kids like try stabbing him with their uh, swiss army knives and kicking him in the shins and it doesn't do anything so they run away and hide in the room like in the building tell the parents and they look outside and they see what it's doing to them yeah yeah and that is the end of my notes though okay so uh, I suppose we'll move on to final thoughts at this point. Um, but... So there is a lot of grammar inquisition. There is a lot of grammar issues with the story, but it wasn't. T- and, and and there's definitely some room for improvement. Like lots, like there's lots of room for improvement for like adding extra bits to like give the creature a little bit more fluff, like in the, in the urban legend and like having the creature show why it's doing what it's doing and stuff like that. I'll say this, in regards to the grammar, it's not any worse, like I've said this before, but it's not any worse than most creepy bosses we read. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I'm about mm-hmm. to get to that. <laughs> like it wasn't terrible, like personally. I I could use some more work on it, like obviously. Um, but it's certainly not the worst like like I just like like you just said, gamer, it's certainly not the worst thing we've ever read on ADR. Um and certainly no different in quality than some creep bosses we've read on the wiki. Mm-hmm. So in the past. So like I was honestly surprised it got removed. Uh I was honestly expecting it to be like a troll, like a really like nasty troll pasta or something, based on like that it was like it was removed because it didn't ma- it didn't uh didn't fit their criteria for, for being on the on the, mm-hmm. the wiki. But like I honestly think that it shouldn't have been removed like it maybe just like give the person a chance to improve the story and build up and then send it and then like and then um like put it back on but don't just straight up just outright it's possible remove that it. they put it on so, and they con- tried contacting them but they wouldn't respond after a warning so then it eventually got taken down and you know what? you're absolutely right it could have been that like situation we, we shouldn't well. throw uh, but, a whole bunch of shade at creepypasta yeah wiki yeah, we're not condemning the admins, obviously. Of this, it's just it seemed it, it, I was we we're just kind of surprised <laughs> that uh, based on like the information that we have here, which is is scant, like mm-hmm. admittedly. So, um, we are outside observers in this situation, but, um, but yeah, as as far as the story goes, I, I'll still partially recommend it. It just it needs a uh, it needs a fair amount of work to um to make it a full recommendation, and like just needs to be cleaned up. So, um. Yeah, I'm still going to partially recommend because I, I do like the idea of it. Uh, but Mikey, he stands for evil. Your verdict. Well, I do like the, the the monster does things. And then we do get conflict. It's not just, ooh, I saw a creepy being. Um, yeah. My main issue is that the the ending doesn't really fit with the whole seeing him out of the corner of his eye. Um, and then warning not to go into a field anywhere 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> just don't, just just stop going to fields. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of room for improvement, uh, but what we have is at least partially enjoyable. Yeah. So it's still a partial recommendation for me. All right. And gamer. So it wasn't a no. I think I might bump it up to a partial just because it has potential. As there's a lot missing as we're talking about. Like the creature itself doesn't really have any character to it. It's a silhouette that's eight feet tall and seems to like stabbing people in this torso for reasons. That's all we got. And even when it's in direct sunlight, or not sunlight, headlights, we don't get any additional information, which might mean it's a shadow creature, but we don't know for sure. In that situation, it should be elaborated on the, that even though it's in the bright lights, it is still just a silhouette. Like That would add to the creepiness of it. And it would solidify the fact that it is only a silhouette and not just something that's in the dark. Um, yeah. The, the Tom and Jerry reference that I kind of had, um, it put the whole thing with a little bit of a Looney Tubes vibe to it, at least for me, which the story kind of... I mean, Hanna-Barbera. Oh, it is Hanna-Barbera. But it... God damn it. <laughs> but it... <laughs> uh, okay, give the whole thing like a Hanna-Barbera kind of vibe to me. Uh, a cartoony vibe. How about that? Um, yeah, that's fine. Which the story itself kind of backed up with how the creature like comedically ran away from a knife to the leg. Which I thought yeah. was kind of weird. And like I said before, its abilities and resistances seem to fluctuate every time it shows up. Almost like it's a different encounter with a different entity. Yeah, there's actually more than one thing out there in the woods or in the fields. Yeah, or it's something where it's like the longer that it's um, on the hunt, it gets stronger and stronger, maybe. What we don't re- know, what we don't realize is that this guy lives in Monstro City, Illinois. <laughs> Get it? Because monstrosity. Aha! Aha! <laughs> I get it. So there's just monsters everywhere. There's just monsters up every fucking corner of the street of this town. They're also <laughs> monsters. They yeah. as in like Naramie and everyone else. Pe- yeah. Well, yeah, Naramie's clearly a mimic. He just keeps like he just keeps taking on Jeremy's form. Yeah. <laughs> sure. That's why they're like, can we see your uh, can we see your knife there, Jeremy? <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he obliged. Yes. But yeah, with what's here, there is potential. And things can be done with this idea. But things have to be done with this idea for that to happen. Because unfortunately, not much is really done with the idea here. Like, Mm -hmm. with how oddly specific things are, it really should be elaborated on. Uh, For sure. So basically, the bones here are good, but there's almost no meat on the bones. Which is my biggest problem with it. Like, through our talks and all the um, potential ways that this creature could be a thing and why it goes for the gut, like with the organ player thing, like that's kind of cool. Or it needs specifically um, like your lower intestines for whatever reason. Or it just likes killing there. I don't know, but... It, yeah, maybe it's just a sick fuck. It, it's, it's possible. <laughs> yeah, But it can't just be killing because it sometimes stitches them up and puts them back. So it has a higher level intelligence than it just being uh, a scary monster. Yeah. Like it's it, at, at, I feel like it's it's some kind of a it's, it's like a predatory mischievous trickster kind of character, creature or something. Yeah, because again, like it plays with organs. Sometimes it, it keeps them out of the body, and sometimes it puts them back in mm-hmm. and leaves them like it leaves the people wandering around in a day. So like, there's an intelligence there. Like, it, it's just like malicious or or uh, mischievous. Yeah, and the fact that there's way. an intelligence makes it more interesting. Because, yeah, it's scary if a a monster is just a monster. It's just, like, animalistic or whatever, because it's just going to murder you for food or whatever. But I can think that's kind of scarier, because it's unpredictable at that point, which is cool. Yep. Also... I just have to add this one thing. It's like, what makes a man? Is the gore in his hand? Or is this quest for creepy? (laughs) Uh, sorry <laughs> I'm just having a, having a giggle having a laugh you are allowed to do that that okay. is why we're here we are occasionally critically silly yes mm-hmm. yeah long story short I'll give it a partial recommendation okay uh, so uh, yeah 
partial recommendations across the hope across the board if you like what you heard or if you didn't leave us a comment in the comment section below where this gets posted whether it be on podbean facebook youtube or tumblr uh we're all on twitter uh you can talk to mikey at the e stands for evil the gamer in yellow at the gamer in yellow but without that w at the end because his name is very long yeah, yeah, yeah or myself at review cultist uh and if you'd like to send us emails go to al dente rigamortis at gmail.com that's a l d e n t e r i g a m o r t i s at gmail.com where you can also leave us suggestions for other creep pastas spook of things scps you creep it we'll peep it yeah um seriously i want to i want a story about somebody i want somebody out there to write a story and send it to us about the organ player because that sounds like an awesome name for a monster and also is a uh, play on words, mm-hmm. and I'm all about that. That um, was really good, by the way, Mike. Yeah, I didn't give you proper props yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody, golf clap. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and and if you'd like to help support our show financially, you can go to Patreon, look up Aldente Rigamortis on Patreon, and select the backer tier you'd like to support us at. We have $2 and $5 tier with special episodes, early access, extra content. To our patrons that are helping support the show, thank you immensely. You're helping keep those hosting bills at bay. And as always, we very much appreciate that. Especially since uh, uh, our uh, our bill date just came up recently. <laughs> so <laughs> that was handy. <laughs> um, but again, sincerely, thank you for all your patronage and your support of our show. Uh, and to our listeners and the authors of these stories, you're not discounted from this as well. Thank you immensely, because without your listenership, it would be like screaming into the void. And especially when you, if you send us emails or messages, like it always brightens our day. And if you didn't write these stories and post them online and then get them taken down, <laughs> Too soon, and then we had to hunt them down, <laughs> and, then we, and then we had to hunt them down <laughs> on our on Wayback Machine to try and bring it back, maybe. <laughs> We really wouldn't have much of a show because we'd have nothing to talk about. Like, legitimately, whoever if 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 um, Wizard Spell is indeed the, the the creator of the story and not just the poster. And and if you ever listen to this, like you have a strong you have bones here. You just got to put some more meat on them bones. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but until next time, I have been your host, Review Cultist. I'm Mikey. The e stands for evil. And I'm the gamer in yellow. And this has been Al Dente Rigamortis. Sleep well. <laughs>